Here's a fun fact you might not know, the world is really weird. Honestly, not that much surprises me anymore after 8 years and 650 videos, but once in a while little gems drop that make me go, what? The world is absolutely full of freak shows, which means that there's a market for weird stuff. So a bunch of people decided to create some attractions to attract those people. And when you see what these are, if it's even possible, you're going to think that the world is even weirder. Here are the 10 most bizarre tourist attractions in the world. Number 10 is the largest chest of drawers. Okay, we're off to a good start. Whether it's the world's largest apple or the largest statue of Elvis, people seem to love visiting the biggest versions of things. Attempting to capitalize on this fact, along with trying to prove that they are the home furnishings capital of the world, which I have no idea why they would want to do that, High Point Carolina unveiled the world's largest chest of drawers. And if that sounds ridiculous to you, it's because it is. This six meter tall structure was completed by the 1920s by High Point's Chamber of Commerce and features a pair of larger than life socks that hang out of a drawer. Then in 1996, the city renovated the chest, transforming it into an 11.6 six meter tall Goodard Townsend Bureau because it's, you know, a lot cooler, I guess. Sadly for the city, a local retailer, Furnitureland South, stole the record with their own 24 meter tall chest of drawers down the road. Yeah, that's that's the way to get popular, just outdo each other with weird tall stuff. It's just a bunch of winners down there. Number nine is a giant Ferris wheel. Okay, okay, Ferris wheels are supposed to be tall, I get it, but this one's just Built in an attempt to bring attention and traffic to the town of Dudley, England, this giant Ferris wheel hit a sour note with both locals and visitors, and has been mocked as Britain's worst tourist attraction. The ride is 35 meters tall and offers panoramic views of the surrounding area. Now that sounds nice, except the only problem is the area is the town of Dudley, and it's mostly dirty stone buildings and miserable looking rooftops. Oh honey honey, look at this! It's a bunch of rats eating another rat! Local government officials believe that the ride which was erected in March of 2016 would put their city back on the map, but wound up being laughed at by surrounding cities and newspapers. Though a handful of people do still enjoy riding the Ferris wheel, paying four and a half pounds, basically to see what the roof of the town's shopping center looks like, everybody else is just not for it. Man, dirty rooftops? <laughs> Sign me up, I'm flying out tonight. <laughs> Number eight is the gum wall. If you crawl under pretty much any desk in high school, you're almost guaranteed to find a few discarded wads of chewing gum. But if you're in downtown Seattle, Washington, you might just find yourself with a whole wall of it. The Market Theatre Gum Wall was started sometime in 1993 when people waiting in line to enter the theater stuck their used gum and sometimes even coins to the outer brick wall. That's called vandalism! Though it's been cleaned a few times, once to prevent structural issues with the bricks being broken down, today the gum stretches for over 15 meters with little of the original bricks showing through. It's actually considered a local landmark and people have traveled great distances just to put their nasty wad of num num on the wall. Some people even create gum sculptures and adhere it to that. Delicious! Number seven is the Restroom Cultural Park. Ah, there never seems to be a restroom around when you need it, am I right? Unless, of course, you're at an art exhibit devoted to toilets. Incredibly, such things do exist, and one of the most ridiculous is in the city of Suwon in South Korea. Officially known as Restroom Cultural Park, this complex features toilet-themed paintings and sculptures, including a long path complete with humanoid structures in various uh, squatting positions that leads to a large building shaped like a toilet bowl that furthermore houses the main exhibition hall. Opened in November of 2012, the park is dedicated to the former mayor, Sim J. Duck, who locals called Mr. Toilet, as he'd fashioned his own house to look like one. I'm not saying this guy had mental health issues, I'm sure he was a great guy and all, um, but he lived in a toilet, and these people elected him to run their city, or town. So, um, yeah, South Korea, you just keep on keeping on with the weirdness, I'm just, I'm gonna stay here, so okay. Good luck with the toilet houses. Number six is Mannequin Peace. Imagine just for a moment that the symbol of your city or region is known for a little naked boy urinating into a fountain. 
Mm. Yeah, that's that's regal. Very nice. Well, if you live in Brussels, Belgium, it's probably easy to do because it's a reality. That's right, a bronze statue called Mannequin Peace, and I really hope it is pronounced peace, which is Dutch for little man peace, stands in the center of the city and is considered the best known symbol for the people of Brussels. The artwork was originally created by Jérôme Duquenois sometime between 1618 and 1619. Though it's only 61 centimeters tall, it's said to embody the people's humor and independence of mind. Yep, nothing like some pee to embody free thinking. If you, like many others, are for some reason drawn to visit Mannequin Peace, you may be lucky enough to see it in one of its many costumes, which include a judo outfit, sailor's uniform, and even Dracula. That's actually a really good question. Does Dracula pee? Because he does drink a lot of blood. That's just a really disturbing thought. Number five is the largest, smallest, largest. Erica Nelson has always been obsessed with the world's largest version of things. So much so that she created her own, the world's largest souvenir plate in her property in Lucas, Kansas. But obviously that wasn't enough for her as her love for the other things that are the largest drew her to create her own attraction in her own van, specifically the world's largest collection of the world's smallest versions of the world's largest things. Did you catch all that? Basically Nelson visits an attraction such as the world's largest washboard and then recreates a tiny version of that exact replica so that she has the smallest version of that specific installation. It's a bit confusing, but it does draw people who want to see the world's largest things, though smaller, in one convenient place. I know that was a mouthful and a little confusing, so let me give you the TLDR shorter version of it. Uh, crazy lady creates the smallest things out of the biggest things. Got it? Cool. Number four is Loveland. Officially known as Teju Loveland, this attraction is an outdoor sculpture park located on Teju Island in South Korea. To get the full experience, you'd have to walk around an area the size of two soccer fields, the whole time admiring and even interacting with the various installations. Of course, the whole time you'd be witnessing a lot of love, being made that is, mm -hmm, people Oh. Yep, you heard that right. Loveland is an artful and educational place where people go to experience secondhand thick. Opened on November 16th, 2004, the park features 140 sculptures of humans in various sex positions, as well as film showcases about sex and even interactive pieces where visitors are encouraged to push buttons, turn cranks, or perform some other actions to make the sculpture perform. Yeah, this one's not for the kitties. Just take them to Disneyland. Do not take them here. Number three is The Thing. Driving along the interstate between Phoenix, Arizona and El Paso, Texas, you're bound to see the signs. There are dozens of billboards that stand along a stretch of 692 kilometers, each one asking, what is the thing? That, or a variation of that question, that creates curiosity to all those that see it. Now that's a lot of hype that could cause disappointment, and you guessed it, it is. The Thing is located at a gas station in Texas Canyon, Arizona, apparently among a number of fake museum pieces, including Hitler's car, which you know is authentic because there's a sculpture of the Fuhrer sitting in the back seat. Well, the actual thing is a fake mummified corpse of a mother and her child that was created by Homer Jack sometime in the 1940s. And although it's decent work, it's hardly worth all those billboards. I guess it's better to call it the thing than come see the fake dead body with the fake mummified child. That's it's stupid. Number two is the big poo. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, some attractions really stink. <laughs> I'm not apologizing for that pun. Commissioned by Ian Cohen, a member of parliament in 2002, the Big Poo is a five meter long foam turd that's located in New South Wales, Australia. The log itself is just on the town's edge and stands as a statement against the proposed project that saw the sewage from people's homes being dumped into the ocean, as opposed to being given to local farmers who actually requested it so that they can make fertilizer. But it's still around because today the Big Poo is a draw for tourists looking to take pictures with it. Hey Ma, come stand next to the big piece of poop. 
Poop poos. And actually, Australia has an obsession with big versions of things, and many people have come overseas to see everything from the big banana to the big potato. When asked why he made it out of foam, Cohen said it was for two good reasons. One, it could be moved easily, and two, it was a floater. Hey. No. Really though, what do you people think he's gonna make it out of? Actual poo? What are you, insane? And number one is Prada in the Desert. Officially unveiled on October 1st, 2005, Prada Marfa is a humorous art installation created by artists Elm Green and Dragset. Situated 2.3 kilometers outside the city of Valentine, Texas, at the side of a dusty dirt road along Highway 90, this structure looks like a Prada store offering handbags, shoes, and other fancy accessories. And it was actually selected by the Prada mogul herself, Miucha Prada. Considered by the creators to be a pop architectural land project, the door to this classy looking store is permanently locked, meaning no shopping can be done there at all. Visitors stop by literally just to look at the out-of-place installation that the artists one day hope will degrade back into the natural landscape itself. You hear that folks? When you're done with all your Prada shoes and handbags, just bury them because apparently they're biodegradable. Wonderful. They're not. Don't do that. That was a joke. They're probably extremely toxic to the earth. Well, this world just got a little weirder for you. <laughs> oh boy. I don't even know what's wrong with these people. Why? Why would you create any of these? It just... You gotta be bored out of your mind. That lady that creates small things out of big things? Out of small things? Out of big things? That's just a headache. That's a headache and a half. I'm done. Have a great day.